games, only one. One more of these teams is going to be advancing on a DreamHack Summer 2015, and then we will have the five teams representing the North American European region. What a crazy qualifying event it has been so far. Again, four teams are qualified, starting with Fresh, followed by Sync, then No Stone Gaming, and then last week in Reason Gaming. And now we are down to the top four. As you can see on the brackets right here, this is it. BMG versus Shrek is Love is the other series. That currently is being covered by Mathematical, actually, over there on his streams. You can check that out as well. But the matchup we're going to be covering is Team Disband versus Team Who. And, of course, a best of a three as it is all the way through. So really excited to be here with so much on the line. Pretty tense, no doubt. And to share the coverage with today, of course, my co-caster, going to be Snowy. Snowy, how's it going? Hey, Bricky, I'm doing awesome today. I don't know what's going on, but I'm I'm just so damn excited for this uh, last <laughs> qualifier. I can't believe we are here. It, I know. It really feels like it feels like yesterday that we were sitting here with qualifier number one, but it's been five weeks since then, and uh, now it's down to these four teams. Only four teams remain in this last qualifier, and only one of those are going to continue to Dream Max oh, Summer 2015. Sure. It's I, it, it it's really shaped up to be an amazing uh, qualifier tournament in yeah. general. I I've been more than like surprised by every single team. It, you know, again, the greatest thing I think I, uh, that we're ultimately getting from it too is that the diversity right now in the Hansi, not only with you know even heroes, but the teams as well. It's ridiculous. I mean, the competition right now is is it, it's as unknown as it's ever been. I mean, th this upcoming DreamHack event, no matter which team qualifies right here, it's going to be one of the better land events we've ever had in Han. I mean, it's just as far as the competition that's going, not only for North America, Europe, but of course Southeast Asia was just announced recently. Uh, Acer Dog as well as Team MRR both just qualify from Southeast Asia. So those are going to be those teams, and those teams really showed at the World Finals that they too can compete and are some of the best, better teams out there. So really, the DreamHack event is shaping up to be one of the best ones we've ever had once again. So that's exciting in itself. But yeah, the qualifiers, it's been a great event all throughout, and here we are at the final one. But Znui, here we are. The draft is well developed, so let's start breaking it down and talk about what's going on here. So, of course, the initial bands, Moira, Flux, Parasite, Ophelia, and then the picks, as we see, Swift Blade into Rhapsody, Moraxis into Puppet Master, and there's Tremble into Midas. A very interesting drafting phase so far here. Yeah, a little bit different. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I don't think that uh, whoever is going to win this series is the one that's made your homework best, more or less. Uh, because both of these teams, like especially like from yesterday, we saw the team who they pl played that flux to close to perfection. To be fair, and we see team disband right away. I mean, they are banning him. They don't want anything to do with him. Yeah. And Hellborn team, they're getting rid of the parasite. I know that Guilfix has a very significant or a very um, specialized parasite in a way with that assassin shroud build um, that he's been running quite a lot. So they're gonna get rid of him as well. And so far, I mean. Either team, I mean, I feel like both of them are really going at their strengths here. And Legion team also, they have Jim Carrey Jew back at yep. in their uh, roster. They didn't play with him yesterday, I think. I I'm not sure who that was, but uh, he did a really solid job at least. So it didn't hurt them too much in the end. I mean, they were able to take a Team Grief, which, by the way, was my favorite to like make <laughs> or at least make one of yeah. the qualifier spots. Uh, so they are really stepping up. I mean, taking two games over recent or from recent gaming earlier today or earlier this week in the Dead Eye Bones League as well. So uh, they are on fire. And uh, Team Disband, I mean, they haven't looked too shabby. I mean, they haven't been necessarily as strong as of lately as they were in the uh, Qualify 1 and then Qualify 2. But, uh, I mean, if they just dare to believe in themselves, they have definitely shown us that they can do it. They can beat those top teams. So, uh, yeah, but with that said, I mean, it's really excited. I, I can't predict whatever team is going to win this. <laughs> no, th there's no one that can safely predict who's going to not only win this series, but win today. I mean, any any of these four teams, if they play well like, like they can, then definitely they, they could earn a, a spot to dream hack here. So I'm all on board with you. I, I do not know what to expect. Uh, we're in for a great day, no doubt. But yeah, very interesting draft. You talked about the flux already, but more importantly, I think what, what that means is that that leaves open the tremble and the fact that team who, you know, picked it up, Sertis, this is the guy that Tremble, when was first brought in back into tournament rules a while back, he was the one that really dominated with it and ultimately even got it banned initially because it was realized that his hero was too strong. He got toned down a little bit, but still a very strong hero, of course. 
And uh, giving that up to to Ceritis, I think, is a little a little risky. I know I know they've been comfortable with that flux as of late, but I, I don't know. I I almost want to say you might just be better off giving them flux and tremble. But what, what do you think? <sighs> I, I, it's such a tricky, you know, like a tricky uh, scenario because it, there are so many heroes that you would really like to ban. I mean, he, I know that Sertus has a very respectable Ugi at the same time, so they didn't ban him either. So they're more or less saying that you know, take whatever carry that uh, you want. We're gonna deal with it somehow. And I mean, they have the puppet monster at the uh, um, Hellborn side, which is a very excellent hero for early man up as well as like that late game. So they could potentially go for something here as an offensive lineup. Uh, Tremble, of course, very weak in dual lanes. Uh, he preferred to have that like uh, babysitting support with him and just box out the suicide. But he can, with those mounts, easily swap out the lanes uh, without wasting any time or nor any gold uh, at level 1. So he can more or less choose what lane he wishes to uh, farm on uh, after the laning phase, uh, laning phase is already set. So mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to shut down a tremble. It really is. So you, you're going to have very, like, you need to have a very solid 1 versus 1 heroes at the same time that can deal with tremble in those 1 versus 1 situations. You don't want, like, a. Uh, Pharaoh, for example, which is a melee hero and that never works very well versus the Tremble. So at the Hellborn team, we already see they've got four ranged heroes showing that they are well prepared for this Tremble. No matter what lane he goes to, they are going to be able to shut him down. <laughs> That's the plan. I mean, obviously, they, they, they had to pretty much know that if they're not going to ban Tremble, there's there's a pretty good chance that Team Who would pick it up with that Sertus player. So, yeah, exactly. You know, having that, that, that game ready to go up against it is the very least you could ask for. And as you're pointing out, that, that's definitely something that they're clearly thinking about. So, Aluna support picked up by Team Who to follow that up as well after the bans happened right there. Also, right the bans real quickly, noticing that Warbeast was banned throughout there. The fact that he wasn't banned or picked in the first three picks uh, is pretty crazy to me as well, considering how god tier he's been given that title as of late once again. But uh, ban there, Aluna, and then Empath to finish it. So the dual support is apparently how Team Who is going to decide to do things here. Uh, Aluna, out of supports especially, I mean, again, she's not played often, but again, as Quincy's stats reflect, not necessarily the strongest win percentage with that, uh, with that hero. Do you, do you think that, that reflects it correctly, or do you think it's just maybe a little skewed? I mean, just not enough games or what? Worth mentioning as well is that she got a little bit buffed in this last major balance patch. Uh, she can stun up to eight targets now, yeah. down to or down from five before. Uh, and I think there was some smaller tweak as well to her. I can't rem recall what that was, but she's, she got buffed a little bit. But in the end, I don't think that's going to matter. It's not going to have uh, too much of an impact after the laning phase. Uh, she simply doesn't have that ultimate as the Rhapsody here from the Hellborn team as, uh, for example, with that uh, protective melody of hers. It's going to be impactful throughout the entire game. And Legion team, I mean, they are more or less all in on giving this Swift Blade a little bit of farm here. And I, I, I'm, I'm curious about this because either you say that, you know, we're going to just try lane a tremble, but that's not going to be very efficient. I mean, you more or less want to put him in those one versus one situations in this game, I would assume. But we already got, uh, let's see, is that a torture carry here? Pinky Curdy playing the torture, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't no, seem he's, like No, he's more like the secondary worst. support player, yeah. He's like their jungler usually as well, so that makes sense. Um, so he's most likely just going to be in a one versus one situation. Either that or they run a Moraxus Aluna in the mid lane. But uh, the risk of them going up versus two supports is going to be uh, a little bit too high. I don't think that Moraxis is very good versus those dual ranged heroes. Okay. Simply because of that, he doesn't have that you know significant lead stun like a Magnus, for example. He can initiate more or less whenever. Moraxis has to get close in. Mm -hmm. And then if you have that torture, for example, as the support, it's just it's not going to be too easy. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that, that's that's actually a good point. And obviously, Aluna, she has a stun, but it's a very, very minor stun, especially usually now if she's able to line it up with some creeps and get that nice stun, then that perhaps could set up more access to follow it up uh, and go for a kill as well. But yeah, the, the likelihood of a dual range going up against it definitely should have the advantage, you would think, on paper. But again, more access himself, another hero that got some good buffs, of course, last patch, and, and one of the more talked about heroes that we have seen the example. Uh, but it, it's kind of funny because we, we've seen the hero since the those changes, but it's not even necessarily been the changes that have really been noticeable. <laughs> it's been more so that just this hero's always been a pretty decent, strong mid initiation hero. It's just now we got some buffs on top of that, so uh, put put the attention back on him, you could say, uh, for these teams. So. 
But, uh, yeah, both teams going with the dual support in the end. I mean, no, no jungler to be had. Again, a lot of them were banned throughout the first and, and uh, even the follow-up ban. So, you know, I guess, again, not too surprised there. But um, at the same time, both teams have potential to run jungle, as we have seen before. But in the end, just simply uh, shaped up to be a dual support versus dual support instead. So Pee Wee playing the Puppet Master, though, as well as Gweefix on the Corrupted Disciple. Um, so yeah, those are the two here. What's, what do you think of the corrupted carry choice here by Team Disband to final pick in against this lineup? Seeing as the Legion team got three melee heroes that are more or less going to be the ones taking up the farm, I think it's good. I think it's really good because Corrupted Disciple not only does his uh, Corrupted Conduit, the second spell, go through the Swift Blade spin, and I assume that the Swift Blade is going to be put in the suicide lane unless they choose the man up. Uh, so Corrupted Disciple is going to have a very easy time during the laning phase, to say the least. And after that as well, I mean, it's just going to be... I mean, they got five ranged heroes. It's not too often that you see these kind of lineups, but I think it just goes back to that uh, the Legion team. I mean, they revealed that they are three main core heroes at the first three picks, and then they picked two supports after the second blinding phase, or blinding uh, phase. Yeah. Uh, so they were well prepared, prepared for this, and they just put up five range heroes instead. And I just say, like, I mean, okay, we are just going to keep our distance, and we're going to slowly, like, uh, <laughs> taper you down. Yeah, well, again, so we'll see. Even uh, even giving up uh, Sertis, arguably his strongest hero, it's, again, you, you no doubt have to have a game plan for that. So we'll see truly how strong Sertis is of a tremble player here, no doubt, uh, knowing that he is going up against a pretty difficult matchup with that set. So... Now, what is Swiftblade doing here at the bottom? Is he going to end up bottom, and they're going to send Tremble top, or...? He's, he's got Marchers, so this might yeah. be something that we haven't necessarily seen before. I think they predict uh, Hellborn team to go for an offensive tri-lane, and then he's saying, like, okay, we're just going to send Swiftblade in the suffer lane, but that's not, that, that's not what's going to happen at all. I mean, Teltuk is going to be down here solo, it seems. Uh, and huh. that leaves Swift played in a very, very awkward position. Yeah. That does. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So choosing to go with that, you got Empath up here to support Tremble. So, I mean, it goes back up to the lanes here and, and how they could possibly be powerful uh, against Team Who. But, I mean, so they're sending Tremble top, but against a Corrupted and Torturer. Ultimately, is what it uh, is what it looks like it's going to be, and you just gotta wonder: is that the most effective choice? Now, Aluna also heading up here with Empath, so I guess the idea of a tri lane isn't out of the question here. But th that, in even in itself, would be kind of a funky tri lane. Yeah, an aggressive I agree. Um, before I go deeper into it, I just wanted to point out: uh, there's a lot of people whispering me about my sound being too low in the stream. I'm not. Oh, uh, I did turn you up a little bit. Yeah, I think you were a little bit, right. a little bit low. So. Turn you up, though, so hopefully that's that's better here. Yeah, um, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, this tri -lane is iffy, but oh, Pinky Curdy on Torture. Went for Marchers, by the way. That's a little bit odd. Might be the saving grace here, though. <laughs> it is. How about that? Oh, oh my oh! god. Jeez. Wow, that was like 10 life, if that. So, <laughs> barely alive. But you're right, though. Boots first on uh, Torture. That's not your often pickup. Yeah, for some reason here. Is is that because maybe to help box out Tremble? Could that have been? I mean... I would assume so. I don't see any other reason for it. I mean, if he wanted to rotate between lanes, between the top lane and the mid lane, but I don't really see any reason for why you would want to start up with Moshers, especially as a secondary support. It would have been one thing if perhaps it did in that case. Huh. Uh, but yeah, look at this up here. I mean, they're already boxing this uh, Legion team out. There's, they're not going to be able to do anything against this Hellborn lineup. Yeah, it seems like Rhapsody, Torture, and Corrupted should beat this Aluna Empath. I mean, Aluna Empath, it's not the greatest synergy there. Empath obviously doesn't really bring a powerful stun. Neither does Aluna. They really don't have any solid stuns here on the Legion side. And, and now they're going to get a nice wall to Corrupted Disciple with that said. And as I'm talking about it, they're going to get the Bloodless Kill. Shorkan picks it up on Aluna. <laughs> on paper, it may not seem like they have the strongest, but, well, they got Corrupted off guard. Very nice wall from Empath. Oh, yeah, that was uh, spot on. Uh, definitely a needed kill for the Legion team. Uh, but uh, Pinky Curdy hit on Torture, I mean, he went for the Marchers first, but he also went for Impalement level 1, and he skilled that after he saw the tri lane from the Legion side. Uh, if he would have had a stun, he would have been able to save the crop there, so a little bit of a misplay by him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate, uh, you know, timing right there with choosing to level up that Impalement, but... It is what it is, Corrupt is dead, now he's already TP'd back and back to farming, so... Again, though, I mean... Is that, is that was I wrong to, to to start talking about that? That it seems like this Hellborn Trial Lane should win, or am I not giving this Legion side enough credit? 
No, no, no. This is definitely going to be, or this should be Hellborn's win. Like they shouldn't, Legion team should not be able to do anything. And uh, yeah, they they realized it now as well. They're gonna swap the tremble down to the bot lane. Uh, hopefully, rotate this with played back here up here. But I mean, the question is, where is Aluna and Empath going to go now? Are they going yeah. to go down here and try to box out Amidas? That's already level four. That's, That's not easy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Gonna give up kills if you try to do that. Uh, already having that transmute, of course. So. Very possibly could pick up, pick up a kill with that combo on one of these very squishy supports earlier on. So, But yeah, I mean, that, that is a nice thing about a tremble as well, to be fair. He, you know, put the mount at the bottom lane. We saw that. He went top. But because he had the mount down here, he's easily able to transition at the cost of no gold in that sense. So the fact that he got an assist at the top lane and was able to rotate like this, I mean, really, it worked out beautifully uh, in the end uh, when you look at it from that point of view. But uh, no doubt forcing to make this exchange and now Swift Blades eventually going to make his way over to the top lane, but for the time being, Aluna is still kind of up here, leeching some experience at least, until Subway gets up there. He's suicide but, Aluna. Yeah, <laughs> not your typical. I guess with Deja Vu, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but I know, she's going to pour here. And up bottom lane, it looks like. so. But now rotations for the Hellborn team. You got Rhapsody joining Puppet Master as well, so... Now it's kind of a 2v2 mid, but as I say that, Swift Blade is running in. The SL Slick's done on a Puppet. No, he's out of range on this. No, I guess it did hit, actually. It didn't look like it, it was out in range. But Puppet Master got hit by that stomp from Moraxis to follow up for the kill. And Hugo Bick also another nice wall right there to guarantee that he wasn't getting away. So, good rotation from Team Who. This Empath pick is really paying off already, and they might actually be able to get another kill here on Rhapsody. SL Slick is going to connect. Yeah, the Axe is hitting as well. No immobilized just yet, but it's not necessary. The auto attack is enough. The stop to follow on a Torturer to kind of slow him down a little bit, but that impalement's still ticking. It is going to wear off. The drops the health potion, trying to give him more access right here, but I don't know if he's going to find the best opportunity. Yeah, there comes the holds, and in the end, more access will fall. So definitely good attempt at the support right there, but in the long run, Slosuke does fall, obviously diving a little bit too much perhaps, but it did get them the kill as well initially, so... You know, also not the worst thing ever. Yeah, really. as long as they can get these early levels on the supports, I would definitely count uh, Team Who uh, right back into this game, even though the laning phase didn't uh, necessarily uh, look so pretty during uh, level 1. But, uh, I mean, they're finding the kills, they're doing a good job. As long as they can secure, like, a pull key onto Moraxus, then uh, they're in good shape. I mean, because the Legion team, or the Hellborn team, they are squishy. They have five range heroes. They're not going to have a Ketulfant or a yeah. Moraxus of their own taking up all that damage. So, Moraxus just can get that pull key, because he's their sole initiator as well, her Legion team. So, it's very important that they get these early kills. He is up versus that dual range now in the mid that we spoke about a little bit earlier as well, that can be tricky, seeing as you don't have the lead stun, and here comes the Torture as well. Yeah, Moraxis pops the Arcane Shield. He is going to get the buff from it. Oh my god, he's actually going to live right there. Unbelievable. He's going to stay alive for the time being. Not much life on him, though, and the Whiplash will eventually finish him off. The fact he lived there initially, crazy stuff. But again, long run, it does uh, do Top. him in with the damage. Top lane, Corrupt Disciple. He's going to fall, though, as Empath comes in with yet another good wall. But bottom lane, Midas able to take out a Luna in the meantime. So this game definitely not scarce with action here as we already have 4-3 to three hero kill advantage in favor of the Legion team. Definitely a back-and-forth bout between these guys uh, coming out. But, yeah, I mean, the all-range lineup, it, it kind of goes back to the idea that, you, especially when you pick a five-range lineup, you figure one of the bigger goals that you're going for is you're trying to win, guarantee win, winning the laning phase, right, to, yeah. with that range advantage. So that, that's really important for this Hellborn team that they come out on top of the laning phase as there's more action once again. Aluna gets found by Torture. A quick kill on him. As Rhapsody, though, in response, takes some good damage. But Puppet Master at a pretty good angle right here. How's that Voodoo Puppet going to finish off more axis? And now Empath gets caught by that Torture Chain reactions and the auto attacks to follow up for the kill. So it's mid-wars. Last minute or so here, apparently. And they <laughs> take the hero kill he does team disband. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is just exactly what uh, you were talking about as well. I mean, they need to win the laning phase and team disband. I mean, it really feels like they've had a plan all along with this draft, with these rotations. It, I mean, they knew how to counter this trample. That shows. They have done their homework, and uh, so far, I mean, it's looking really good. Yeah. If they can keep the Moraxes down, then they're going to look very strong entering the mid game. <laughs> Uh, Puppet Master finishing his Steam Boots right there. So he is the top farmer in the game, 360 gold per minute, obviously. A fantastic start coming out for him. So, yeah, Team Who going to definitely be relying on the on the Certus Factor, playing his, his, his uh, go-to hero, no doubt, on the Tremble. 
So it's safe to say, uh, keep an eye on his farm and how that looks. Ion Stone picked up by Hugo Bick. Always fun to see that. It honestly seems like we have been seeing Ion Stone a little bit more lately. Um, I, I've been noticing that. More and more supports picking this up. So perhaps finally teams and support players themselves realizing the potential of this item here. Yep. Hopefully it sticks when the Merrick's bounty goes into tournament rules as well. True. So that it doesn't you know, get replaced because I, I'm... Pretty much fear that that might be the case, but yeah, so far I mean it's nice to see it because it's very, very good of night. Yeah, they're gonna get killed down here, Midas. Look at the patience there from Empath. Yeah, he's gonna wait to wall at the last second. There we go. I mean, Toltec knew that he saw Empath coming over, so he couldn't Elemental Warp right away. He was trying to bait it out, but you go big didn't have anything of it. He he was being very patient with it. And how about that? Empath is two one and four. He's been involved in all six kills here for this Legion side, so he's a huge factor right now. Oh wow, yeah, it, it really is a Jugubic MVP so far of this game, no doubt. Making some big plays he's making, here. making, yeah, all the rights and rotations, like he's been on every single lane, he's getting those kills, nice patience, like you mentioned as well, onto that Midas kill, yeah, he's playing. Uh, I mean, it, both teams, I mean, they're just bringing the aggression, really showing that they want this game, they want to move on to the finals, they want that spot, <laughs> and I just love to see it. Yeah, it's, uh, you can tell that they're playing, uh, they're playing for a good purpose here. Now, uh, Swift played, um, curious what you think on this, he, again, he goes there, we get the teacher, I assume that's going to eventually turn into an Abyssal Skull here, but again, I, I've honestly been loving this idea of the Portal Key, the other Parasite build lately, and especially in a role like this once again, where, you know, he's not playing the carry, he... Ideally, he is playing more of the the quick kill hero, uh, the gankier, the aggressive hero in that sense. Do you think you would rather see that this game, or are you fine with him going more of the routine Abyssal Skull here? Mm, no, I, I want to see the offensive uh, portal key more or less. I mean, they need something else to jump in alongside that Moraxis, and especially when they're up versus such a squishy team as their Hellborn team is here. It's just, I mean, get the Teleparasite, get that uh, portal key, just jump in. I mean, no matter who you find, um, Maybe not the Midas, he can jump away, but the rest of them, I mean, even Corrupted Disciples to a certain extent, I mean, if you can find him alone, depending on what item build he goes for, you can get an easy kill, so I definitely feel like he should go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I've really been liking it, and it seemed like it was the trend there for uh, a week or so, but it's kind of died off again, honestly. So, um, you know, Team Disband, speaking of them, they were the ones that really kind of brought it back here recently, Gweefix specifically uh, doing it, but... We'll see. We'll see what that, that eventually does turn into again. I don't guarantee you it's going to be an Abyssal Skull necessarily, but <coughs> with the Ring of the Teacher, you probably would expect that. So bottom Smoke lane, bottom. Yep. yep, Veiled Rock coming in. Now support is kind of nearby. I don't think they're going to be able to make it in time, though, so Tremble's in a lot of trouble right here. He is hiding in the mountain currently. Do they have any well, kind of goes out for this. vision? Doesn't Man. matter. He oh, does. he runs. oh, my God. <laughs> he ran right up. I love it. Dude. That was a free kill, or I mean, that I think that would have been a kill. I mean, Tremble was simply just waiting for the creeps to drop a little bit lower, but I'm quite sure that he would have gone for that last hit or that mm. deny, and then they would have had a kill. So that's a huge opportunity loss. Yeah, not patient enough. I, mean, I liked the idea, yeah, exactly, not patient enough. It was a good idea, but it was bound to fail. Well, that's also the idea, too. I mean, sure, you don't... He's not invis all the time by any means, but honestly, getting something like a dust it wouldn't be the worst option either <laughs> to try to go for a kill on a tremble in cases like that, you know, so you don't have to worry about the mound effect with the invis at least. So, But no kind of vision detection there and ultimately able to get away in the long run. You'll also see the stacks coming out in the jungle here, and Swiftblade's actually been taking out a good amount of them. Uh, he's about 235 gold per minute. I mean, this is a Swiftblade that's basically been jungling. He hasn't really been at the top lane this whole game. For the most part, and he's he's been jungling, and it seems like it's actually working out decently. Yeah, seeing as they haven't addressed the top lane much at all, um, or much at all, and the fact that he went marchers level one, I mean, he's really been doing a good job on um, recovering. 250 GPM, yeah, that's that's not bad at all. Top lane, oh, here we come with uh, actually Tremble porting it with the mound. You see, Corrupted Disciple applies the conduit, but it was way too late by that time, and Tremble still able to do more than enough damage to secure the kill. So the movement from Ceratos. Comes in right there. He had Boris up here in the first place. That's what allowed him to come in and obviously sets up that kill. It's still not over just yet. Uh, maybe, though. It looks like uh, Tremble just instead going to clean up some stacks here in the meantime with Empath inside. And continue yeah, why that not? farm. Yeah. 
you made it all the way up here, I mean, you might as well get a little greedy and go for it. No, but I mean, as well as the torture, he has some very good, nice success. Oh, wait, they're going to go. This is going to backfire big time, though. Yeah, and yeah, it will live. The Swift Slash is very good. Bounces right there. Puppet Master is going to fall, but at what cost? Tremel now in trouble. Here comes that chase. You're talking about Conduit applied, and he eventually falls as well. As No, they actually, Swift Play was able to get out. I didn't realize he ported just in time. And so he is. He does survive. So really a one-for-one -one exchange puppet for Tremble right there. But you were right. I mean, pretty greedy move right there to dive the tower like that at this point. In the end, it, wasn't, it didn't turn out too shabby. I mean, they got a puppet monster for the Tremble. Uh, he was close to that Funny Claw timing, though, on the Tremble. So definitely not a good thing dying there. But I mean, in the end, I mean, they got two TP from the Hellborn team used as well. So. I think it's all right. I mean, yeah. as long as they give them Morax. Oh wait, speaking on Morax, is what the hell? He went for the plated grave. Interesting. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, it's it's all right, but uh, yeah. Uh, it, usually, you see the steam boots that you can support because you have a very low mana pool. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so this is one of those things. Uh, something we we you know, I feel like especially lately we have been stressing the idea of team items and and auras and things like the sack stone you know in this case play the grief similar obviously um, so I wonder if that's kind of kicking in that 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 idea that you know what it's it's good to get that team item here in the plated greaves um, for that support factor I mean yeah I'm looking at this hellborn side it's not like it doesn't scream oh my god we need physical reduction by any means but it is a, it is, it's a nice aura to have, and it looks like they are getting an Abyssal Skull on top of that, so... Uh, can we fault them, I guess? I don't think so. I think it's... No, it's not good. really. I mean, it's one of those items as well that, I mean, you could really see much more of, especially when you have those offensive or uh, like, this push kind of forest heroes, like Ophelia, and uh, Tempest, for example. I mean, it's a really good thing for one in your team to actually pick up those Plate the Graves. Yeah. We don't see it too often, but uh, yeah, Slaska definitely making a point there that he wants to see more of this item, or more of this item. Well, yeah, and the idea of a Sackstone with this makeup, you know, might not make the most sense. Empath running in, but I don't think she realized how many was there, as all of a sudden Moraxis feeling the brunt of the damage. Pops that Matrax out, as well as the Arcane Shield. It didn't activate, but the Matrax more than enough to keep him alive. Now here comes another turn. Tremble ports in with the mount once again. And Puppet Master will fall. Empath jumping inside Tremble. And now the fight continues, actually. Corrupted Disciple, though. Now he joins the party. Conduit applied. Tremble needs to fall back. He's trying to get out of range. He will. Swift play. Meanwhile, Swift Slashes takes out Rhapsody. And the spin on top of Corrupted Disciple right now. He's hitting pretty hard. He pops this Void Talisman, by the way, that he just got right Whoops. there. It's going to mitigate some damage, but not enough in the end. Corrupted does go down, as does Moraxis, though. But again, it's still not over. Midas will fall. A double tap for Seratus. He got out initially, and he came back in to finish it off and now they're gonna push a tower but yeah that's the most interesting thing avoid talisman on corrupted disciple not usual oh man i don't know about that one but i mean that entire fight i mean this is just disastrous for the hellborn team i mean they are they, they need to win the early game with those five range heroes they are not going to be able to uh, stand their ground versus this trembled swift blade moraxis when it comes to the mid late game if they keep this farm up and that fight especially i mean it started off with like the empath and the tremble running in and the hellborn team going for a kill onto moraxis but puppet monster choose not to use his ultimate during that time he thought they were going to be able to finish off the moraxis without it and that just backfired big time and i mean in, in the end, I mean, they almost got genocided by this Legion team, so... Yeah. Um, maybe take the safe uh, before the... What's it called? Before the unsafe. Yeah. <laughs> For us. Try to... In those kind of situations. Yeah, be, be, be a little bit safe than sorry, basically, kind of deal. And, uh, so. well, they were most certainly sorry after the, after that fight right there in favor of Team Who. And, again, you look at Seratis now, 437 gold per minute. He clearly, once again, is showing why he's no one for playing this hero. And ideally, you usually want to ban it against this team and if he's if he's on it. So uh, the way he plays it, too, again, he plays it so really, honestly, perfectly. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a carry potential hero that also has great mobility with those mounds. And I feel like a lot of Tremble players don't abuse that enough. With the Boris sending him out constantly, look for kills, putting some mounds down to port two. Seratis, I mean, you look at right now, there's literally mounds at every spot on the map that he, we need to go. I mean, there, there's multiple middle, multiple bottom, multiple top. He's just making sure that he has the choice at all times uh, to, to to look for those kills with the movement. So, oh, Morax's haste. By the way, mm, not no. going to be able to. <laughs> Trying to chase them down a little bit, but 
Yeah, don't get too overconfident now. I mean, as long as they sit back here on the Legion side, I think they got this game. I mean, get those four items up on the tremble. Get the BGB timing hitting, by the way. Yeah. Uh, minus, yeah. Oh, nice wall. That's the last thing he was porting anyways, but it does even assist a little bit of damage. Again, the Thunderclaw also, not only a great farming tool, but we, we talk about that every now and then. It's obviously just a great damage buffer early on in the game. <laughs> you know, 150 magic damage. Uh, uh, you know, especially on Tremble with the proccing so often, that's a lot of extra burst at this time. Oh yeah, and I mean, they didn't even clear off or clear up the Terra Mounts up here at the top lane. Uh, two supports were around, but I am pretty sure that they spotted Terra Mounts as well, but they didn't kill them. And I mean, this just gives uh, Tremble even more presence, like just as we talked about just before. I mean, he Certus is doing a wonderful job at keeping those Terra Mounts up and at every location on the map. I mean, they are in his own forest. If he wants to go back to farming some stacks, then he got that option. If he wants to go for a kill on the hard carry corrupt disciple, who's by the way died four times already, 17 minutes in, and he was in the safe lane. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, doing a wonderful job That's on true. the Tremble. Yeah, geez, Guifix is str I mean, the fact that he's still 280 gold per minute is actually pretty good, but yeah, we got to talk about this Void Talisman. I mean, I know we kind of mentioned it and then looked over it, whatever, but what the hell, man? Why would he go a Void Talisman? I mean, it is great against Tremble and Swiftblade for that matter. I mean, there is that purpose, but is that a good item to have on your own carry? <sighs> Not necessarily. It's not the, the it's not the kind of pickup that you want to pick up. But I mean, I guess he just felt forced to actually go for this. I mean, he died so many times already at the top lane, and it's it was made or got pretty clear that his supports just weren't able to provide his division that uh, he wanted to. So he didn't feel like he could go for that Thunder Claw or that Firebrand. He just felt like he had to get this avoid talisman so that he couldn't get solo killed by Tremble. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's all right seeing the situations, but I mean, it's far from optimal from what you would want in this situation. Yeah. Yeah, I see him pointing out right there. I mean, Brutalizer definitely seems like it's a great follow-up item for Tremble, but actually, no, he goes a Shrunken Head here, and hey, I think I, I, I can understand that. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of lockdown and some good magic damage, especially earlier on, uh, coming out from the Hellborn side. So another Void Talisman, by the way, picked up this one on Torture. Again, that makes more sense, if anything, you know, being a kind of a support, and, and he's all about magic damage himself. So um, you like the Shrunken choice, though, from Tremble? Yes, yes, I love it. I think it's correct. Uh, as long as he, he stays alive, I mean, there's nothing that the Hellborn team is going to be able to do. They don't have any push. They got the Rhapsody and the Torture, but they don't have any hero to actually tank the towers, so it doesn't matter in the end if they have a dance floor running element. They're not going to be able to put pressure on the Legion side unless they go for those, like, Veiled Rot ganks. Uh, so that BGB, I mean, that's going to prevent those uh, kind of gank attempts, and as long as he survives, I mean, they're in a good shape. More axes in mid. Nice job with the Protective Melody, though. Pretty much a full duration. He's just standing there, though. He's taking some good damage himself. You see Boris with the net on a Puppet Master. He turns around, but the Shrunken Head goes up. The Voodoo Puppet, he gets the damage out, but it's not nearly enough right there. Three players dead just like that. Serich is with a double tap. And that's the other thing that we really have to keep in mind here about all this, too. Empath is constantly inside Tremble in these fights. Look at Hugo Bick. He's been involved in all 16 kills. He's 2-1-14. Wow. I mean, we mentioned earlier when it was six kills, but to be involved in all 16 <laughs> kills, that's ridiculous. That's insane. I don't think I've seen that before. Even though you like feel like you're everywhere on the map and you feel like you're having a god game, I don't really think that you ha I have ever been, like when I've been playing support, that I've ever been in like all kills. So Jugabik being in all 16 kills, that's amazing. Big yeah. props for him. And now this middle tower, it's it's going to drop pretty quickly here. No sign of a defense being put up, and for good reason. 500 gold per minute travel. He is 200 gold per minute plus anyone on the Hellborn team right now. And again, this is not a hero you want to let get out of hand <laughs> by any means. And, and this well, is a Tremble, which happening. by the way, it had a very questionable laning phase. I mean, he was yeah. like at 200 gold per minute or something at a four or five minute mark. So I don't know. I mean, even before game number two, I mean, you, you know, got a bad hero. It's a, uh, again, I'm kind of thinking about this too. And the more I'm looking at it also for team to span, I really think they got caught up in this whole counter tremble strap we like again not banning it knowing that it's very likely going to be picked up clearly again they had a strategy in mind but they they got so caught up in it i mean they went a full range lineup we talked about that from the beginning they laned it as if they were just trying to deal with them which again it did lock them down so but then even items the corrupted disciple going void talisman first it, it's things like that it's like okay maybe that's a little overkill here <laughs> that's you guys are really trying to do so much but and the fact that they're doing so much of a counter tremble strat and it's still not working whatsoever should really tell you something. 
about uh, maybe Sirtis specifically on this hero. But uh, Torture goes down right there. It's just going to continue. I, I don't – I know it's still – you know, it's not the most tremendous lead in the world, but uh, I, I don't see this turning at this point for Team no, Disband, no, unfortunately. No, no, no. <laughs> this is one of those times that you just – I mean, it's such an important game, so you don't want to concede too early. But, uh, I mean, there's always time for mistakes. But, yeah, I mean, as you have been mentioning here, I mean, it's a really good point that you're making that they are very focused on his tremble. And when you make those kind of countermeasures or countermeasures for just one hero alone, then his teammates are going to step up. Raxus, Swift Plate, I mean, they're all on 300 plus GPM, and it's just, yeah, in the long run, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. I, I still feel like during the laning phase, though, they should have rotated after the tremble because of, the, I mean, they had the superior lane uh, advantage at all three lanes. I mean, they could easily support or uh, send Rhapsody and Torture bottom in just lane with that Midas because we mentioned it as well. Midas was level four at the time the tremble rotated, so they could have easily just made a trial lane down there instead and continued to shut down the tremble. Instead, they just stayed in their own force and focused on shutting down the Miraxus in the mid giving Tremble tons of farm and tons of experience, hitting that level 6 mark, and then Serta's just doing his thing. Yeah. Yeah, but no doubt. I mean, obviously the whole team is just been play, playing great. Again, we've talked about uh, Empath now, who continues to keep up on all 18 kills. Uh, he's been involved in every single one this game, and he, he's obviously, uh, you know, he's, the fact that he's just, a lot of that has, excuse me, a lot of that has been from the idea that he's constantly jumping inside Tremble, basically whenever that's off cooldown, and they're looking at get involved in a fight, and that, that's just knowing that he's getting that much more attack speed, that much more damage, the movement speed buff on top of that, as well as already being so farmed. Uh, it's just, y you can't realistically look at this right now and feel comfortable if your team disbands. So, Swift Blade. They're oh, trying, but no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, the Assassin Trap, Puppet Master, he may find somebody, but Tremble ports in. Look at that, he jumps Midas right away. Puts in a half-life right off the bat. The Shrunken Head, they can't do anything against him. They're all just running while the Shrunken Head's up. Finally, they get the kill on Rhapsody. Now Corrupt is chasing him down. He actually is getting some pretty good conduit charges right here as Tremble, though, eventually gets out of range to cancel it. But now they're looking to turn it. As soon as those conduit charges run off, Tremble's going right back in. Five more seconds. Eh, he doesn't care. They go on a Corrupted. Double tap for Jim Carrey, you. And now Midas in trouble. There's the vote to concede, though, as you would expect. GG, well played. Team who dominating the first game against Team Disban here in this best set at three, and Ban Tremble, I think, is all what we learned here. And did you see what Quincy pointed yeah. out as well? What was Mid that? never had a support or a player that has been involved in all kills, and now just because of that last team fight, uh, Big actually didn't manage to. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, he finished 2-1 and 16. Darn it. <laughs> he, he, he deserves that, if anything, but uh, yeah, I guess technically. Didn't get it there. But anyways, yeah, team effort, sure, but no doubt. Again, the lesson learned, I think it's safe to say, just ban, just ban trample against these guys. You need to get rid of it, yeah. I mean, uh, the teamwork between Jugobik and Sertas, I mean, those two two players goes way back. They started playing during early season three, I think, if not before, but that was when they encountered a competitive scene, at least with the team Dawn. And then they've been playing together, I think it was during Thailand qualifiers. Uh, then Sertas left for a bit, but now he's back, and Team Who, I mean, they really stepped up their game during this last week when Sertas, like, uh, joined their uh, roster. So, if, yeah, Team Who, I mean, if I were, like, BMG or Shrek is love, depending on who who's going to win, or Team Disband for that matter, in this game number two. I, I, I mean, I would honestly feel a little bit feared for yeah. just like, how are you going to do this? I mean, it felt like they really had a uh, lineup like to, to counter this tremble, or, like specifically a lineup towards that tremble, and they still couldn't do it. So I'm just not sure where to go from here to game number two.